In this video, I want to go through a few more challenging examples of differential equations, just so you get some practice of all the methods that you need to be able to employ. So let's start off with this first one. The y by dx is equal to 2x e to the x over y cubed. So I need to separate the variables. So I'm going to multiply both sides by y cubed to get all the y's onto the left-hand side and multiply it by the dx to get all the x's on the right-hand side. So I should get y cubed dy is equal to 2x e to the x dx. And of course, then I put in my integral signs. Now, the left-hand side is quite easy to integrate. So just to add one to the power, divide by the new power. So 1 quarter y to the 4. The right-hand side, however, uh, I've got 2x e to the x. So I'd have to use integration by parts to do that. OK, so integration by parts. We're going to let the u be the 2x and the dv by dx to be the e to the x. So du by dx will be 2, and the v will be e to the x. So this will integrate 2, u times v, so 2x e to the x, take away the integral of v times du by dx, so 2 e to the x dx. OK. So we have 1 quarter y to the 4 is equal to 2x e to the x, and this will integrate to 2 e to the x, plus a constant c. Now, you can choose to work out the value of c now, or I would probably multiply all the way through by 4. So I'm going to do that first, I think. So I'm going to multiply through by 4. I'll get y to the 4 is equal to 8x e to the x, take away 8 e to the x, plus, let's now call this k. So four lots of c can be k. Now, I need to substitute in 0, 4. So 0, 4 will allow me to find the constant. So I'm going to have 4 to the power of 4. I don't know what that is off the top of my head. So that's 256. Substituting in 0, we're going to get 0 there. Take away 8 lots of e to the 0, so just take away 8 plus k. So add 8 to both sides, we're going to get 264 for k. So therefore, y to the 4 is equal to 8x e to the x. Take away 8 e to the x plus 264, and that is my particular solution to this differential equation. OK, um, you might be wondering, well, could I write it as y equals? Um, I mean, you could, but the problem is you're going to get a plus minus involved when you do the fourth root, and I'd prefer not to. So I'll leave it like that. OK. Right. OK, that's number one. Number two, then, dy by dx is equal to 6x e to the x squared over y plus 2. So to separate the variables, I'm going to multiply both sides by y plus 2 and multiply both sides by dx. So I'm going to get y plus 2 dy is equal to 6x e to the x squared dx. And then I'm going to integrate both sides. Now the left hand side, straightforward to integrate, we'll have 1 half y squared plus 2y. Now the right hand side we have 6x e to the x squared. This is not by parts uh, because we can't integrate the e to the x squared. So what you should recognise is you have x squared as your interior function, and that differentiates to 2x, which we have a multiple of that out the front. So you could do this by reversing the chain rule, or you could use integration by substitution. If you want to go down the integration by substitution route, you're not too keen with reversing the chain rule, then let the u be the x squared and go from there. Okay. However, 
we can reverse the chain rule on this. So we know that e to the x squared will differentiate to 2x e to the x squared. And so we've got three lots of it there. So this will be 3 e to the x squared plus c. Now, make sure that you're convinced by that. Does this differentiate back to that? Well, the 2x, the interior function, differentiates well, and comes down to the front. So we'll have 3 lots of 2x times e to the x squared, which is the 6x e to the x squared. OK, now, again, um, you could substitute in the 1, 2 here um, and work out c. Um, I'm not too keen on having the half there, so I'm going to multiply through by 2. So y squared plus 4y is equal to 6e to the x squared plus, let's call it k. Right, now I'm going to substitute in 1, 2. So the left-hand side, what have we got? We've got 2 squared plus 4, that's 2, so 12. And on the right-hand side, substituting in 1, we're going to get 6e plus k. So k is going to be 12 take away 6e. And then we'll have y squared plus 4y is equal to 6e to the x squared plus 12 take away 6e. Now, again, you might be wondering, well, could we get y equals with this one? I mean, you could uh, if you complete the square on the left-hand side um, and then uh, rearrange, and then you'd have to square root, so you could still get a plus minus involved, um, which I'd prefer not to do because uh, it just makes it doesn't make it look any nicer or easier to use, so this will be fine, okay? That is my particular solution for number two. Right, number three, dy by dx is equal to y squared plus y, take away two, over x. Right, so I need to get all the x's onto the right-hand side, all the y's onto the left-hand side. So I'm going to divide both sides by y squared plus y minus 2 and multiply both sides by dx. So I'm going to get 1 over y squared plus y minus 2 dy is equal to 1 over x dx. And then we're going to put in our integral signs. Now, the left-hand side, you should be thinking, right, the bottom doesn't differentiate to a multiple of the top, unfortunately. So your next avenue is, can we factorise the denominator? OK, so because we're going to go down and think right partial fractions then. So we've got the integral of, does this factorise? It factorises to y plus 2, y minus 1, dy. Is equal to the integral 1 over x dx. Right, so now I need to do partial fractions on that left-hand side. So 1 over y plus 2, y minus 1, is equivalent to a over y plus 2 plus b over y minus 1. So 1 is equivalent to a lots of y minus 1 plus b lots of y plus 2. So let's let y be minus 2 to start off with. The left hand side just gets us 1 and the right hand side cancels out that bracket. Minus 2 take away 1 so minus 3. So that's minus 3a. So a is minus a third. If we let y be 1, the left hand side is 1, the right hand side will be 3b, so b is a third. So now we can write our integral, so let's just box this off for the moment. So we've got the integral of, we've got the minus 1 third 
over the y plus 2. So I'm just going to write it like that. So minus 1 third over y plus 2. And then we've got the 1 third over y minus 1. So plus 1 third over y minus 1 dy is equal to the integral 1 over x dx. Now, you might be wondering, well, why have I written it that way? Why have I not written it as minus 1 over 3 lots of y plus 2? The only reason is uh, sometimes it's just easier to work with uh, if I don't simplify it uh, when I go into the integral in the next stage. I mean, you can, you can do it that way. Um, it's really up to you. So let's do the integration part now. So for the left-hand side, we're going to get minus one third times the natural log of y plus two, because the derivative of y plus two, the denominator is just one. So uh, this is minus one third times one over y plus two. So minus one third times the log of y plus two when you integrate. Plus one third times the natural log of y minus one. And the right hand side will be the natural log of mod x plus some constant c. Now you could at this stage substitute the e5 in, work out c. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of uh, manipulation first, I think. So I'm going to multiply through by 3 to start off with. Um, and I'm also going to just reorder those two terms, I think. So we're going to get the natural log of the modulus of y minus 1 take away the natural log of the modulus of y plus 2 is equal to, now I've multiplied through by 3, so I'll have 3 times the natural log of mod x plus, let's call it k. 3 lots of c can be k. Now with this left hand side, I can also use my log laws to write that as the natural log of the modulus of y minus 1 over y plus 2 is equal to 3 natural log mod x plus k. I think I'll leave that as it is. I won't bring the 3 up to the power. You can if you like, it's up to you. Now I'm going to substitute in the e5. So for the left hand side, y is 5, so I'm going to have the natural log of 4 over 7. On the right hand side, substituting in the e here, the natural log of e is 1, so I get 3 plus k, so k would be equal to the natural log of 4 over 7, take away 3. So now I have the natural log of the modulus of y minus 1 over y plus 2 is equal to 3 times the natural log of mod x uh, plus k, which is this natural log of 4 sevenths, take away 3. Okay. Now, again, you might be wondering, right, like, can I get that to y equals? Um, with this one, I guess you could. Um, if you e both sides, don't forget on the right hand side you would have e to the 3 log mod x plus log 4 7 to take away 3. That's all in the index. Um, then you could multiply it by the y plus 2, uh, get all the y's on one side and get to y equals. So this one you could write um, in the form y equals, and you might want to see if you can get to that answer. 